We've reached a point in this course where you know enough about JavaScript to start playing with the new HTML5 APIs. Very exciting. Now the term HTML5 refers to a specific technology, but it's been hijacked by the mainstream media and it can mean pretty much anything that looks cool in a browser. Now it doesn't matter whether it uses HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, or even an animated GIF. It looks good. As far as everyone's concerned, it's HTML5. Now perhaps one of the most exciting new features in the HTML5 technology itself was the introduction of native audio and video. Until recently, you required a browser plugin such as Flash or Silverlight to add any sort of media to the page. Now today, the situation isn't quite perfect. First, not all browsers support HTML5. Now, if you're targeting Internet Explorer 8 and below, then Flash is probably your most viable option. And of course, if you're using Flash, then why bother with an HTML5 alternative? Well, there is one reason, and that's Apple iOS devices, such as the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. They do not support Flash, but do offer HTML5 video and audio. However, Apple chose H.264 as their preferred video codec. And unfortunately, that's not an open source technology, so it wasn't simple for Mozilla, Google, and Opera to add it to their browsers. So the situation's a bit of a mess. It means you probably need to encode your video in H.264, provide an open source alternative such as WebM, and have Flash to ensure it works on most devices. But let's not worry too much about that for the moment and examine what's available today to us in HTML5. So go ahead and open video.html in the API-HTML5 working files folder. You'll find a very simple page with a basic video tag. Now this includes an ID, so we can reference it later, a poster attribute, and this is an initial image which shows before the video starts playing. And we also have a controls attribute. Now this shows the play button, a progress bar, volume and screen controls. Now we also provide two video sources. The first is MP4, which is H.264 encoded. And the second is WebM. Now this should be enough to get our video playing on most desktop and mobile browsers. And sure enough, if we refresh this page, we can see we have a nice video. I can press play. And we can pause it any time and resume playing. Now that's great, but it's not very interesting. Everybody does this. Now we can take it much further and create our own custom video controls to handle playback. Or we could show a series of videos playing one after the other or we could show subtitles, or maybe we could change other elements of the page as the video is playing. You can let your imagination run riot. Now the audio and video elements are exposed to JavaScript so you can read and modify their properties. Now there are far too many to go through here, but I will show you the basics. Now the first thing we need to do is remove our controls attribute. We really don't need it. Now let's add some controls of our own. And we'll have a play button. And we'll set the href to anywhere in the page, it doesn't really matter. And we'll also show a timer. And this will show the percentage of the video that's been played. Okay, let's save and run that. Fantastic. So our controls don't exist on the video. And I've added our button and our timer and I've styled them in the CSS, which you can examine at your leisure. But currently though, these really don't do anything at all. I can't even start the video. So let's fix that now with a little scripting. I've already added a script tag. So let's define a few variables that we'll need to use. First is the video itself. 
which we had the ID of bunny. We'll also reference our play button, which has an ID of play. We'll grab our timer node. And we'll also define another variable which we'll use later to update our timer. So next, let's add standard event handlers to the video itself and the play button. So we'll run the play video function when the video itself is clicked. I'll also add a very similar line for the play button. Now we can write our play video function. Useful comment there. We'll pass in the event object. And the first thing we'll do is prevent the default event, which will stop our play link, find here, jumping off to that particular reference. Now next, remember that we're calling this function to play or to pause the video. And we can actually check if a video is paused by examining its pause property. So if video paused. So at this point here, if the video is paused, we want to play it. And that's simply done by running the play method. Also, let's change the content of our play button to pause. So the video is not paused, it must actually be playing. And we can pause it by running the pause method. And again, let's change our button so the text shows play. So if we recap, we're detecting when the video or the play button, which we've added, is clicked. When either event occurs, play video function runs. It cancels the default action, whatever that is. And if the video is paused, we play it. Otherwise, we pause it. Very simple. Let's save our script and refresh our page. And now, hopefully, when I click play, the video will start. I can also click the video, stop it, and start it. And of course, I can click pause and play anytime I choose. So let's now get our timer working. We want to show the percentage played over here. So what we're going to do is create a timer which runs a function every half second or so. And for that, we'll use the update variable that we defined up here. And again, we'll use the set interval method that we saw in previous lessons. And we'll run an inline function. Now, what that function will do is reference the timer node and set the text. So here, we want to capture the current time which is easy is doing, you guessed it, current time. And we want to divide that by the duration, which again, very easy, the duration property. Now to turn that into a percentage, we need to multiply by 100. And because that will end up being a floating point number, let's round it to the nearest integer. And we'll add a percent string to the end. Now to run this function every half a second, we use 500 milliseconds, and that's the end of our function. Now if the video is paused, we actually want to stop this timer. It wouldn't do anything, wouldn't be a problem, but there's no point in running it if it's not needed. So to do that, we'll ensure it's started, and if it has, we'll clear the interval. So let's save our file, refresh our script. So we click play, the video starts, and you can see the timer percentage increasing as the video progresses. And that's all there is to video handling within HTML and JavaScript.
Audio handling is identical, except that you use the audio HTML5 element instead. I'll have a play with it and see what you can do.